Hey, this is a tutorial on Delta Custo, an overview of its capacity. Hopefully it will give you a better idea of what it's capable of. First, if you want to find this tutorial, you can go to the Delta Custo GitHub repo. If you scroll down at the bottom, you will find the tutorial section. And in the tutorial section, that should be the one at the top, Delta Custo overview. Although this tutorial gives you an idea of the capacity of Delta Custo, we recommend the other tutorials, mainly the install for sure to install the CLI and also the authentication uh, tutorial to show you how to set up a service principle. Before we jump into the tutorial, let's first review what Delta Crystal is. Delta Crystal is a CLI command line interface. Its purpose is to facilitate CI CD with Azure Data Explorer databases, and it does that by comparing or computing a delta between a current and a target database. Now, the interesting part is the current and target database can be either a real Azure Data Explorer database or a script or a collection of scripts. So you could compare a current being a database, a target being a script, or a current being a script, a target being a database, and etc. We're going to go through different scenarios like that during this tutorial. After computing the delta, Delta Crystal produce an action. An action can be either just displaying on the console where the delta is in terms of commands. So delta is always commands. Let's say on the target, you have a table. On the current, you have no table. Then the delta will be a command to create a table. So the delta script re represents the command set that you need to execute on the current to obtain the target in terms of metadata. So it doesn't copy any data. It just copies the metadata, tables, function, policies, etc., etc. So as we mentioned, action could be displaying on the console, pushing into a script, pushing to a folder of scripts, so to structure the scripts, and also it could be to push to the current cluster. Now to run the CLI, we use a parameter file that describes the current and the target sources, and also the actions, and gives some other information, for instance, the authentication. Parameter file is documented under documentation on the GitHub repo, and it has the following structure. We could have many jobs inside a parameter file. In today's tutorial, we'll just go through examples having one job, but you could easily have multiple jobs. For this reason, the Tokusto could be used for a multi tenant scenario where you could push the same configuration on multitude of databases. The current and the target could be databases on the same cluster as we'll do today, or it could be databases on different clusters. Those parameters files are meant to be kept under source control, so to carry with you when you do change management in your CI CD pipelines. A concept that will come in handy is the concept of override, where you'll want to override values that are present in the parameter files. We'll see that in an example. Without further ado, let's go through some scenarios. For all the scenarios, we have two databases, a dev and a prod. And you'll see the scenarios are typical change management in different environments. So we start with a dev and a prod that are empty, but the first thing we want to do is simulate a brownfield scenario where we add some development happening on the dev cluster, and we want to promote that to production cluster. The first thing we'll do is run a couple of scripts on our development database to create some metadata or some structure. In this case, we're going to create functions. And then what we'll want to do is the typical brownfield scenario is to use Delta Custo to download the configuration from the dev cluster to a script file. Delta Custo does not have functionality to download a database, but what you can do is set up dev database as the target and an empty database as the current. Say, I want to move from an empty database to dev. What should I do? It's going to compute a delta, and it's going to basically implement all the scripts that you, or the cumulative amount of scripts that we implemented in the dev database. So let's do that. So here I have my cluster where I have my two databases. So we can see I got a dev and a prod databases. There's nothing into it. So let's go to the query environment. I see that 
the two databases are empty. So I'm going to go to the dev database, make sure that the context is in the dev database. I'm going to run some commands. So I'm first going to create a function, another function, and another function. So I can see I have one function inside the helpers folder. Otherwise, the other, the other two functions are here. I'm going to switch the command line. I'm going to start with the Linux environment for a command line here. I'm running Linux on Windows. And after, I'm going to move to PowerShell. So I want to download this thing into a script. I'm going to use this file present in the tutorial called downloaddev.yaml. So that's a parameter file. So let's review it together. First parameter is standing error opt-in. It's an opt-in feature, as its name suggests. It's set to true if there is any error, any exception within the CLI. The exception information is going to be sent to a centralized API so where we can review it and improve on the product. By default, it's false. If you want to opt in, it will improve the quality of the service. I then have a job that is defined called download dev. The target is the database dev on the cluster UI that is not specified. In this case, I'm going to override it. It's not mandatory to override the cluster UI because it's not a sensitive information. In this case, since we're sharing that on GitHub and everybody will have a different cluster name, we found it more useful to override it with the rest of the parameters. There is no current source defined, which means that the current is empty. So we're gonna delta dev database to an empty database. The action is to push the Delta script to a file path called dev state.kql. Finally, we have some information about the token provider, information that we're going to override in the command line. So let's run the command line. So we're going to run Delta Crusto that we previously installed, as we showed in the previous tutorial. I'm going to pass the parameter file. Then I'm going to pass a bunch of overrides. The concept of override is relatively simple. Following the YAML file path, we can override. So for instance, token provider.login.tenantid will override this. And this way we pass the tenant ID, the client ID, the secret, and finally, and here I can just execute it. So we see the CLI is executed. It loaded the parameters on downloaddev.yaml, found one job, ran the job, found three commands in the delta between the empty, processed it, and completed. So let's look at that dev state, that KQL. We found a script that is not identical to the one we provided, but is functionally identical. Now that we have a script for dev, the thing we might want to do is use CI CD to push to prod. Here, we're just going to simulate that using the command line on on my laptop, but we could easily generalize that into a CI CD pipeline. So here, what we're going to do is compute a delta between the script being the target and prod being the current, and then the action being push it to the current, so push it to prod. And that's going to basically fill the prod with the same content than the Dave database. This case is relatively trivial because prod is empty, but if prod contains something, it would compute the real delta between the state of the dev and the state of prod. So let's do that. For that, we're going to use the parameter file push to prod.yaml. Similar structure. We can see a new parameter called fail if props that I put to true. By default, it's false. We'll see that in action in a later example. We define a job, different name, push trips to prod. We define a current being the prod database and a target being the dev state KQL file. The action, there are actually two actions defined here, pushing the Delta script to a file path prod update the KQL and also pushing it to the current. So let's execute this. So here I'm gonna change the command line to override the right portion of the script and we execute it. We found the three commands have ran and it completed. We could look at the Delta script that was run. It's prod update, again, functionally equivalent to the other one. And if we look at the prod database here, we see it now contains, it contains identical structure than the dev one. Let's continue. So here the dev is continuing and some changes were made as illustrated by those dashed lines. So 
speed is slightly different. So we're going to download it again using an empty database, computing the delta with a dev database, and downloading the script. So that downloads the complete state of the deb database, not only the changes, but the complete state. And that's the idea behind Delta Custo. You always work with target state. So whatever your production state, the final state is going to be the same one that the dev. Then, of course, we're going to want to push that to product. So let's implement the changes over here in the dev database. Always make sure to be in the right context. And we're going to perform the following changes. So we're going to change the folder of the function interesting states. Instead of being in the helpers, we're going to change it to being in the states folder. So if I execute this, we see the folder change right here. Still helpers and product for sure. We're going to drop the function add. So we're going to do some destructive changes. So dropping the function and we're creating a function subtract. So we see that dev and prod are no longer the same. Going back to the command line, we're going to execute the download dev parameter file again. If we look at the dev state, kql, this is the state of the database. So it doesn't contain the changes, it contains the final state, the desired state. So we have our direct table here. The our interesting states is in the states folder. We get a subtract function. We don't have the add function. Now we have our script. We want to push that to prod. So again, we're going to use a delta. Having the current for prod and the target is the script. But this time it's going to fail. Why is it going to fail? Because we have this fail if drops flag in the parameter file. So this is a safeguard if we want to make sure that we don't destroy information in a Custo database. We can put this flag on. And we could imagine that in a CI CD pipeline, we could have a different stage, one that is controlled by uh, human approval, where we would check the Delta script. Some human will look at it and say, OK, we dropped this thing. That's fine. I approve this stage. Let's run it. So that's the ID behind this flag so that we don't want to destroy. In case of a function, it's not a big deal. If it would be a table dropping a column, we would lose data. Or dropping a table altogether, we would lose data. So back to the command line, we execute again the same parameter file, push to prod. And this time we see a failure, a failure due to drop commands. And the CLI even tells us what is the drop command. The drop command is drop function add. So there's something destructive going on. And since we specify the flag, just let's review the parameter file. So we see this fail if drops is too true. If we would change it to false, then we could run this thing without a problem. We could override it, for instance. If we look at the database, we see that it hasn't changed, it's still in the same state than before. But instead of forcing this change, we're going to do something else. So another common scenario when we do development and change management between environments is we want to bring back the production database to the dev environment to make sure they are aligned since prod is the truth. And we're going to do that here. So in this case, we won't use any script. We're going to use the current and the target as database. So we're going to compute a delta between the two, and we're going to simply apply it, and they're going to be identical. This time around, let's do that in the PowerShell integrated environment. So first, let's look at the YAML file, prod to dev. We explicitly mentioned that fail if drops is false, although that's the default value. Then we have a job going from an ADX cluster to an ADX cluster, so the current being dev and the target being prod. So we want dev to become like prod. And the action is to push to a file path to dev update, but also push to the current. So let's execute that. And then we have a bunch of overrides for the login, but also we have twice the same overrides for the cluster URI in both uh, dev and dev. Then we execute this. Boom, three commands in Delta. And we can see if we look at the dev update, those are the commands that were executed on did the changes that we did. And if you go back, Explorer, prod, still the same, prod doesn't change. We see here the differences, and we do refresh dev. We can see us coming back to where we were. So that's an example of basically a sync between two databases. For our last scenario, what we're going to do is modify dev again, download the state, 
as always dev stay for dev let's not do the same thing for prod so here what we do is what we call an offline delta so that's to that's to illustrate what could happen if you're in a, a highly controlled environment such as an enterprise where you don't want to necessarily act directly on a cluster so what you might want to do is do your delta offline so you download the configuration in dev download the configuration in prod do the delta between the two scripts completely on offline find a delta and then take this delta for human approval and push it to production so a slightly different way of doing it in a more controlled environment let's do that so first we're going to go and make sure that we're in dev we're going to reapply the same changes that we did before. So changing the name of the folder, dropping fun, uh, the, dropping the add, adding the subtract. If you catch my meaning, then we're going to do a bit of a shortcut. We're going to copy the dev start samples that KQL to prod stay. That's basically the script you use at the beginning to create a database. So our helpers folder, our add, etc. So that's represent our prod state our dev state is already available we're going to capture our dev state by running delta custo against an empty database again so now we have our dev state and our prod state we want to compare both we're going to do that with another file here's the parameter file pretty simple since we do offline we don't connect to any cluster we don't need any credentials so we're going to go from the current being the production state. The target is the dev state. So we want to push dev to prod. And the action is to put the delta file to prod update at KQL. So let's run that. We won't have any override here. So that's going to be much simpler. I'm just going to specify the parameter file, let it run. And we find our prod update over here. Then we could take the script and run it to prod and would have a copy of dev in prod. That was the final scenario we wanted to look at. Uh, we invite you to look at the tutorial to maybe try it on your own and maybe download the content of your database, try to push it to a test database that you just create on the fly just for testing purposes. Get familiar with the parameter file, get familiar with the overrides and let us know, give us some feedback on uh, GitHub.